guys welcome back to another video of mine today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I achieve my glossy skin and I'm also gonna be showing you guys how I've been doing my brows lately I have went through some stuff with my brows and I feel like I finally found a style that I really like and I'm really excited to share it with you guys so if you want to see how I do my base and how I do my brows then just keep watching. Before I even touch my face with any primers, moisturizers, whatever, I always make sure to wash my hands. If you don't, you're just spreading bacteria around in your face and that can cause acne and a bunch of other stuff and I don't want that. To prime my face, I'm going to be using MAC Strobe Cream. I've been loving this. It's almost empty. That's how much I love it. I use the shade Gold Light just because I have more of a yellow undertone. If you have more of like a peachy, pinky undertone, they also have a pink one and I think they have a silver one as well. So there's one for every undertone. I always make sure to put it on the back of my hand and I do like a little poop like that. I am just gonna take this and put it all over my face. This is basically just a moisturizer with reflex in it. It's not glittery, it's very fine and you'll see here in a second that it gives a really nice golden glow. By the way, if you're wondering why I immediately got red, I have very sensitive skin so anytime I rub my face or do anything to it in general, I just get red. I also have rosacea on my cheeks, which sometimes can flare up really bad and I'll have like really patchy red cheeks. You can see the nice glow that it gave me, especially around my highlighted areas. And I really just prefer using this just to give my skin that extra glow that I want. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Milk Original Blur Stick. I like using this in this area just because my pores are a little bigger right here and it really fills them in nicely. They also make a Luminous Blur Stick which I'm really wanting to try out just because that's me. I kind of like press it in as I'm swiping it on and I really just get it in those pores. You can see it instantly mattifies anywhere you put it on. I also put this on my forehead a little bit and on my chin. If you're wondering throughout this video what this little dot is, it is literally a pin because I have a bed sheet pinned to my wall. I'm just trying out new things to see if I like a dark background better or a light one. And it would be really appreciated if you guys would let me know if you prefer the dark one or the white one. But yeah, I have a bed sheet pinned to my wall, um, don't judge me, okay? I'm making it work. <laughs> Next I'm going to take the NYX HD Concealer in the shade Green, and I like to use this for color correcting when I have any spots or any redness in general. So I have a few spots right here that I'm going to try to color correct, and I also put it around my nose just because I'm more red there. I'm just getting over a sinus infection, so I've been blowing my nose like crazy, so I definitely want to conceal some of that area. Um, my skin is doing pretty good lately, so I don't really need to do much more, so I'm just gonna focus it right here. Where is my brush? Why are you hiding from me? I'll take a dense brush like this. This is a Real Techniques shading brush, and I will just take it straight off the wand. You really don't need a lot. If you do too much green, you will see that through the foundation, and we definitely don't want that. So you take the tiniest amount, and then just go straight in and cover her up. Basically, you just want to cancel out the redness. You don't necessarily want to cover the pimple with the green. You just want to conceal the redness of the pimple and that's perfectly fine. I don't even know if it will show up on camera, but that's all you want to do. And then I'll just take my finger and blend that out even more just to make sure I'm not going to be looking like Shrek. Next I'll take a concealer. This is my favorite one from Maybelline. This is the Fit Me Concealer. I really, really enjoy this concealer just because it has a really nice price and it's just overall a really good concealer. And I will take this and I will go straight over the spots and the areas that are already concealed with the green just to cover them even more. I definitely like using a concealer that's more my skin tone to conceal. Just because when you conceal a pimple or whatever you're concealing, you, the concealer is too light, you're gonna bring that out instead of drawing it back. So I always make sure it is my skin color. I 
I'll just take my finger again and blend all of that. Another thing I do before foundation is I actually go in with concealer under my eye. I feel like when I already have foundation on and then I go conceal, it gets a little cakey and I feel like this way it just makes it look more natural and not like you have just a bunch of concealer under your eyes. And instead of just going in and going like crazy with it, I really just focus it on the areas where I need it to be concealed. So I really just kind of do it where my eyes are more dark because your girl has been lacking sleep. I also do it kind of in the outer corner right here just because I'm more darker in that area as well. You can use a sponge, a brush, whatever you want, but I honestly just prefer using my finger just because I feel like it does the same thing. And I really, I kind of take this down and up. I don't really just go straight under my eye because we're probably gonna put like eyeshadow under there anyway. So I really don't need it to be like all the way up in my eye. And this will prevent it from creasing like crazy too. Because let's face it, almost every concealer creases because you have creases under your eye. Like it's inevitable. I cannot say that word, Inevino inevitable. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's really hard being bilingual because sometimes I do not know words in either language and I'll know the word in another language, but I just can't think of the other language's word and it's just a mess. All right, that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna go in with my favorite foundation of all time. This is the Ordinary Coverage Foundation. If you like a matte foundation, this probably would not be for you. I have dehydrated oily skin, which means my skin is oily, but it's also dehydrated at the same time. It also has SPF 15 in it, which is always good. But yeah, if you like a dewy foundation that looks like skin and isn't too heavy or cakey looking, this one is the one. I shake her up real good and then I'll take about two pumps on the back of my hand. By the way, the sponge that I'm using is from Shop Miss A. If you don't know about Shop Miss A, they are a online store. I don't know if they have stores like anywhere uh, in real life, but they have a online store and you can buy makeup stuff for a dollar and I swear to God, this is the best makeup sponge I have used. I can't compare it to the original Beauty Blender because I've never tried it. This one is better than the Real Technique ones in my opinion. It is so fluffy. It's lasted me so long. It's really dirty right now. Please wash your sponges. Don't be like me. And I will just take the foundation straight onto my face. I do want to let you guys know this oxidizes a bit, but it oxidizes to like my perfect color, which... You know, it's not going to be like that for everyone, but I do just want to let you guys know that it oxidizes a bit. You can kind of see where I applied it at first. It's already kind of darker. I really don't mind it unless, you know, I get a shade and then it oxidizes like orange on me or it oxidizes to a color that I just can't wear. But this, it's fine. You just kind of have to keep that in mind when buying this. Also, this foundation is super cheap. If you don't know about The Ordinary, The Ordinary is a skincare brand that does really good skincare for really cheap. I love using their hyaluronic acid, but like I said, this is probably, I think, six or seven euro, which is incredible for a foundation, and it lasts me a pretty long time as well. And as you can see, it blended out really nicely, but it still gives you that skin-like finish. It doesn't look like I'm really wearing any foundation. Also, what's really important to me with this foundation, it does not make me break out. I have super sensitive skin and I swear, almost anything makes me break out. And I'm just so happy that this doesn't because I love it so much. <laughs> it evens out my redness quite well. It You can still kind of see some of the redness through just because my skin is a little patchy right now, but it's gonna be okay because I'm gonna put a bunch of blush on anyway. One that I found really similar to this is the Maybelline Luminous and Smooth, which is pretty good. It's almost similar, but this one is just a bit more dewy and skin-like. I 
that is the foundation done and as you can see it just looks very dewy and very skin light you might not think that at the moment just because I only have the foundation on and I look really flat but as soon as we get some blush on this face I think you guys will see what I'm talking about you guys obviously know I love blush I live for blush I have not been contouring my face at all lately just because I love using blush as my contour which can be scary to some people and I know my blush is very overdone to a lot of people but this is what I like, this is what I prefer. You know, you can definitely bronze up your face or contour your face with a powder, cream, whatever but I am not going to do that just because this is how I've been doing my base and yeah, let's get to blushing. What I like to do now is use a powder blush as a base that's kind of the same color as the lip and cheek tint and then just putting the lip and cheek tint on top of the high points of my face to give that glossy highlight look. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do that. My favorite powder blush at the moment is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in the shade Pearlescent Pink. This is such a pretty shade. I love shades like this so much, like a corally pink shimmery blush. It may not look like it in the pan but it has a really pretty golden reflect and I take a really fluffy brush like this. It's kind of like a huge blending brush if you will and I will just go into the pan straight away and I will tap off the excess and then I will just go in and do circular motions. And I basically just keep dipping into the pan and building up that color. But this is such a pretty blush, I cannot get over it. And it's so cheap, so affordable. When I go a little too far in, I'll just take my beauty sponge and I will dilute it. I think that's the word. You can always tone it down if you need to. Some days I feel like wearing more blush, sometimes I feel like not wearing too much. Honestly, who am I kidding? I always feel like wearing like 20 pounds of blush, but you know, do you. If you like it, cool. If you don't like it, cool. Do whatever you want to do, but this is what I like to do. Now that the powder blush is done, I'm going to take the Moak Lip and Cheek Tint. You guys know I love this stuff. If you don't know, then you probably haven't been following me for a while. I've been in love with this product ever since I got it, and you're about to see why. I already have a really nice glow to my skin, but just wait. I will take this on my finger like this, and I will really just focus it on this area right here. Kind of where I would put my highlight. And you can see immediately that it just gives me like a really glossy kind of glow. That's really the key product that gives me that glossy skin type of look. People always think I put straight up lip gloss on my cheeks and I've actually never tried that because I don't think that's a good idea. I feel like if you just put gloss on your skin it will lift everything underneath but this product doesn't do that so that's why I love it so much. Alright, next up we've got freckles. You guys ask me all the time how I achieve faux freckles that are really natural looking. What I use for my freckles is the Eye Magic Face Paint Palette. This is a dupe for the Makeup Forever one. I got this off of AliExpress for I think 10 euro and it doesn't really work well for face paint because the formula is very greasy but it's amazing for freckles for that exact reason and I'm about to show you why. I keep like going like this like why? Why? Why do I keep doing that? I use a paintbrush for my freckles. This is just from my local craft store. You can probably find this if you're in the States at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. What I will do is I will mix some of the yellow and the brown together to make more of a yellow brown. I take some of the yellow. Now I'll just put this on the back of my hand. And some of the brown. What I would do is I'll take a really generous amount on the tip of it. And I'm going to zoom you guys in just so you can see what I am doing. I'm really just going to create a bunch of dots randomly. And I will take my finger and I will spread. And because the formula is so greasy, it's really easy to spread around. 
and I really prefer that over any powders or dip brow. I've really used about every method for freckles I possibly can. And this is definitely the best way um, that I've found that works for me. As I keep doing my makeup, the face paint kind of sinks into my skin more and it makes it look a lot more natural. My base is pretty much done. I have not really been wearing highlighter much lately just because I prefer the glossy highlight. Next thing I'm going to show you is how I do my brows. I have been loving soap brows lately. If you don't know what soap brows is, you literally just take a bar of soap like this and wet it and run it through your brows and it makes them the fluffiest you'll probably ever have your brows, but I haven't quite got the hang of it completely, so this might go good or bad, we'll see. I'm gonna try my best to make them as fluffy as possible and to make them kind of even, which, I mean, my natural brows, you can see, they're not even whatsoever. This one is like, mm, and this one is like, sad brow. You want to make sure it's clear-ish like this because I tried it with a different one that was white and it did not work whatsoever. You can use either water or setting spray. It really doesn't matter in my opinion and I would just give it... Oh. I will take a disposable spoolie like this. I have it angled so it's easier to brush my brows here. Brow hairs? Brows hair. Brow hairs up and I will just swirl like this into the soap. I have about this much product on it. I'll just brush my hairs upwards through the whole brow and then I'll take the end of my spoolie and I will actually lay them down. Like that. All I'm going to do now is use a little bit of the Kat Von D Super Brow Pomade in the shade Taupe and I am just going to fill in my brows a little bit where I need a little more coverage. I look angry. I also love this essence brush for doing my brows lately. It is super thin and super affordable. I'm not opening the door. Please leave it at my door. I'm not gonna fill in my brow. I'm really just gonna create strokes where I need a little more strokeage. <laughs> And that is exactly how I've been doing my brows lately. I really like it this way. I really hope this was helpful for you guys on how I achieve my glossy glass skin type of makeup. I had a lot of fun creating this and I'm really excited that I'm really getting into YouTube. I'm gonna try to upload once a week. I'm gonna try my best and I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next time hopefully. Bye!